Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we'll be talking about the new age of sourcing. And I brought in a specialist this morning, everyone. I have Karen Blackburn and she is the materials manager for Dust Solutions. So welcome, Karen. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Chris. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. I mean, so Karen and I, we, we met maybe what, three or four months ago, I think mm-hmm. we, when we actually had, had a chance to meet and uh, just had a wonderful conversation. I was like, you know what? I've learned so much from you. Okay, will you come on the show and, and share some of your expertise with the guests? So I'm just, we're very blessed to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time with us again. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to be talking about, you know, sourcing and, and this is, you know, as a material manager, you do this a lot, but I'm just curious if you just meet someone at a restaurant or you're, you're at a, you're at a dinner party and, and you talk to them about professional procurement, how do you even define that to somebody? Like what do you, that, of, of what you do? Yeah. So, um, basically for me, um, I would just describe it as it is just a professional, uh, sourcing, uh, process. It's, uh, working with your, your business alignment and, uh, bringing your materials and goods in to support, uh, your sales and, um, you know, your, your key, um, objectives for manufacturing on time, um, just sourcing. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, when you think through things that are happening in the in the procurement world right now, I'm sure since COVID, you know, it's impacted everyone's in so many different ways. And we'll, and we'll talk about that later, I'm sure. But right now, as it sits, are there one or two priorities that really jump to the top when you start thinking about, you know, what you're trying to accomplish in your day and, and keep the plant running and all that, all that type of stuff? Just curious, you know, what those priorities would be right now. Uh, definitely sustaining the supply chain. Um, I, I would say that there's not a person that works in procurement that isn't worried about where their next parts are coming from. Um, just with all the challenges, not only with, uh, supply, but, um, transportation, logistics, getting things in, um, yeah. manpower, all of that. So I would say, uh, securing that supply chain, um, as well as, you know, trying to maximize the efficiency of, um, the process and uh, max, still somehow trying to maximize profits out of that. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's tricky, right? I mean, it's really tricky it when you look at everything that's happening right now with supply chain and uh, just the, the way that the cost materials are just going up. So I'm sure that's that's impacting, you know, it just it just keeps rolling downhill, right? It impacts it everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the cost of goods are um, are just really out of control. Um, and it's really hard to kind of reel it in. And, and now we're looking at things that are uh, more value added um, in addition yeah. to just the cost. And I think that's kind of where my focus has definitely moved to is um, if I can't keep the cost downs, what can I get um, that is going to add value to, you know, what we're doing every day? That's a great point. That's a great point. I mean, that cost is real. I, funny story. I, I was at a store yesterday. I was talking to a lady and uh, she was buying bird seed for her, <laughs> she, she, for to feed her birds. She's like, last year or or the last time she bought bird seed, it was nine dollars a bag. She just spent twenty dollars and eighty one cents. She was just like, "How is that possible?" I'm like, "Well, it's not like you want to have some hungry birds at your house, you know." So it's just, <laughs> we, it just, but it really impacts things, and you have to factor all those things in. So, hats off to you, you know, for what you're doing there and that, and having that value added mindset because I think as as procurement trying to find those extra pieces of value add that that's so critical as you move forward. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And I think too, it's, it's something that we're not spending enough time looking at, you know um, I, I think we're kind of calling it like result areas now, instead of like looking at KPIs, we're looking at uh, mm. KRAs, like a key result area where, you know, okay, again, if we can't, um, if we can't maximize our savings just on the cost of goods, you know, where can we deliver that value elsewhere into the process? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting take on it. So I'm curious as well, you know, we've talked about the priorities that have shifted. Has your responsibility shifted a lot in what, in what procurement is trying to do, particularly since the pandemic? I mean, is that, is that a whole new ball game now versus, you know, <laughs> yeah. pre, the pre COVID day? Yeah. I mean, um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think we, we kind of deal with a couple of different challenges with that, right? We've lost the connection, the daily, not, not so much the communication, but, you know, a lot of times people coming in and sharing what we're doing here so that they can see how they can help us. So we lost a little bit of that with suppliers, um, having them come in. Um, and I think, um, but I think on a shift is we've also gotten a little bit more resilient and, um, really trying to streamline those uh, resources that we do have. Um, and again, you know, I, I probably will say, you know, value added a hundred times today, but um, really forcing us to rethink that stability in uh, what we're doing every day and, and bring it honestly to uh, the other management members of the team um, and having them all think about it too. And, and how is it affecting what, you know, was happening in, scheduling and engineering and sales as well. Right. I mean, when you think about it, there's so many hats that, you know, you mm -hmm. have to wear, you know, as someone who's, you know, I've worked in electrical distribution my whole career. Mm -hmm. And I guess it finally hit me one day when I was, when I was selling back in the earlier days of my career of, well, you know what, this, this buyer is not just buying electrical stuff, <laughs> you know, right. like everything. Right. And, I, and, I, and why am I not as important to this buyer as I should be right in my brain? I'm just thinking that, but like, there's so many different tentacles that you, that you all are working with every, every day is from, you know, raw materials to the parts to mm -hmm. electrical, obviously, but there's, I can't imagine how you keep up with all of it. I mean, it's just because it, everything's changing so fast. It is. It is. It, it's definitely a lot. There, there are days that it's, um, you know, it's exhausting when you think about it. And uh, anybody that's in my position is kind of going through uh, those kind of things. And again, it's it's across the board. It's not even just, you know, the goods, it's the services, it's the support. Mm -hmm. It's um, having enough people on our team. You know, a lot of people are suffering with, you know, having enough um, help you know, in their, their mm -hmm. groups too. And, and manpower has been an issue. So I think, um, yeah, it's a, it, there are definitely days when, you know, it's a lot, you know, you put in a, you finally get to put out one fire and then, you know, something else yeah. starts to burn and, and, um, and finding the resources to do things. I mean, we are now in this process of, of, um, I need this specialty part. It's a special request. It doesn't help that we're a custom builder as well. Uh, because our um, requirements change uh, for right. each of our customers. So it's not like I'm buying always. I mean, there's a lot of things we use repetitively, but you're not right. always buying the same goods every day. Right. And um, looking to resources that I probably would not have considered three years ago. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, yeah. mm, you know, I don't know. Is that the right thing to do? You know, and and trying to establish those relationships with that kind of stuff and and just kind of rethinking how we do things. Yeah. You know, you mentioned earlier about the, when it, the pandemic happened, the loss of connection with a lot of suppliers, mm -hmm. but that also led to that resilience that you, that you spoke of. But I'm curious on that connection standpoint, you know, working with vendors and, and resources like that, do you prefer talking, having that direct engagement one-on-one -on -one with, with the sales reps or the, the or the experts themselves or, would you prefer like a self-serving, you know, like an e-commerce standpoint? Mm -hmm. Just what, is there, or is it a mix of both? I'm just trying to get a, mm -hmm. a feel for what, your world, what what works best, and you know, helps you achieve your goals. Yeah, um, honestly, I am definitely a down the line on that one. So um, I'm definitely a people person. I like to have that communication. I like mm -hmm. to see people, to meet people. I think it fosters uh, a deeper uh, respect for each other. Um, mm -hmm. When you know, I mean. You can't have a good business relationship if you're not respecting each other's side of the business um, and trying to kind of meet in the middle and, and, you know, come up with something that works for everybody. Everybody's in business for the same thing. My job is to save money. Their job is to make money. So um, <laughs> you, right, know, you, have right. to, you have to understand that. And um, I think really working through that is um, that one-on-one. -on -one you know, getting to right. kind of know somebody, but I will tell you when it's four o'clock on a, on a Thursday afternoon and I've got a project that has to ship tomorrow, e-commerce is the greatest thing on the planet. So, <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, you know, I guess for me, it's definitely both. Um, I like the ease yeah. of the e-commerce e sometimes. And I, you know, it's also probably time saving, um, where, you know, I'm just logging in, I'm not talking to anybody, not going through the whole, you know, 
rigmarole and and stuff and you're just kind of doing things so uh but i really i really feel like in general as a society um we should not lose that personal um connection with our suppliers absolutely well the eco team would say amen to all that right yeah. <laughs> we, we, we like that personal connection but we also see the the, the huge value in having a a robust e-commerce solution mm -hmm. because i mean that, and literally that that's where a lot of things are shifting so we need to be able to be there for you when you need that moment where you can just point and click right and also at the same time when maybe you have that question you need that technical expertise so right it's it's wearing both hats absolutely um, you know and speaking to that you know when you think about the suppliers that you're working with and, and, and you can even take eco off the table if you want i'm just mm -hmm. curious best solutions when you think about what actually provides value to your day what solutions are you seeing out there that's helping, you know, the world the materials manager, you know, you, you have a lot going on. What, what really does make an impact for you? Um, I think, uh, again, we're in those, you know, uh, areas where the value added. So for me, um, some suppliers uh, have a weekly delivery um, and I'm not paying freight. So I'm saving money. And I know every week at, on a Wednesday, this delivery is coming in and, you know, working through that. Um, so, again, that's, that's kind of like a value added thing. I yeah. um, We have one supplier. Our, our costs are just out of control. They happen to be in that particular market that, you know, our metals are just um, way up. Um, and so their offer was they really couldn't do anything about the pricing. Um, I mean, we worked on it, but, you know, I mean, not anything that was going to make the difference between the double from three years ago to what it is today. Right. Um, but um, we'll deliver it for free um, on freight to you every week. So we'll take all your orders. We'll consolidate them. We'll pay for the freight for it to come to you. OK. You know, they work that out on their end. And I think that that's uh, some of the things that help us. You know, you can kind of, you know, we're not, you know. We, we're not getting the pricing that we really want on the parts, but we're also not paying this excessive freight bill um, as well. So there's a value there. Um, right. And then uh, we've talked before about some of the vendor managed inventory, um, mm -hmm. which is um, something that we're trying to establish a lot more of here. Um, and having somebody else do some of that physical work for you and um, processing that information in the system. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you went there too with, with your vendor managed inventory, your VMI, you know, when you think about the decision-making process to actually move towards a VMI program versus just keep it as, you know, something that you manage in house, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Is it, are there different levels? Is it certain items Do you want a certain number of turns? I mean, I'm just curious, what are the, right. the, the, the key areas that, that make you say, we need to do a VMI for this? Yeah, I think that it is specific to areas. Um, there yeah. are, especially on our electrical side, um, that doesn't change quite as much as our mechanical side. So okay. on the electrical side, so we have a separate room um, that is set up for our electrician. And that's like my key area for VMI. And the specific parts, we use them all the time. Um, they're responsible. They take care of the parts when they're in there. Right. Um, which is also, you know, a decision that has to be made too. You also have to, um, you know, be sure that we're using things the right way and that they're, right. they're working through the process as well. You know, that's not their thing. You know, they just want to make stuff and get it done. Um, so, you know, working with them, but you know, then I'm reducing my people working um, that are on my team, spending the time counting, right. We're not counting mm -hmm. anything anymore when it comes to electrical and right. let's all know who wants to count electrical parts to start with in the beginning. So, um, but you know, we're, we're taking that time that we're spending to manage inventory, do the transactions for inventory um, and probably slimlining our inventory because it becomes progressive with um, what are we using? What are we not using? You know, maybe mm -hmm. we thought we were using more of this and now we're doing more of that. Um, and they kind of manage that flow for us. So it's kind of given us a little bit more of a consistent inventory. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it's, it's, it's really working. I mean, when you think about, you know, looking back to VMI programs you have in place, how do you know, you know, what's working the best? Is it, are, 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 uh, excuse me, are they quarterly meetings? Is it a regular reports? Like what's coming back mm -hmm. to, to you to show you that, yes, this is working. 
Uh, it's definitely reporting that comes in from um, the supplier. Um, okay. They give us reports. Uh, what are we using? Or you know, and the other thing too that's really nice is, um, in a, in a way, you're controlling the pricing too. If you can sign on for a program, we agree to pay this much for. In these days, anything that I can get on a blanket order is going on a blanket order. Okay. You know, so for a I certain can, period of time, type type deal. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if I, you know, um, there are areas of uh, suppliers that would be like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen, but. Um, and I, and I get it, but the, um, being able to work out those kind of, um, agreements on cost and stuff are, are important as well, but getting those report backs and, and just saying, you know, um, you know, this is what you're using and, and it also helps us maintain our systems too, right? Our, yeah. we, we talked about our new ERP system, you know, what are we looking at? What are our min maxes? They're doing transactions. We can feed that information back into our system. So. Um, I think just that communication about, hey, listen, I get really busy. There's days I don't have the time to worry about how many ferals I have in the building. And uh, right, <laughs> you right. know, it's um, getting those reports and just being able to look and be like, okay, okay, you know, and kind of get an idea of what's going on. You know, that's pretty important. Okay. Now, speaking of those reports and data, are there is there any data right now that you're not getting that you think would be helpful uh, you know, just trying to think, you know, forward looking, you know, from a, from a solution provider standpoint, like Eco mm -hmm. or, or other, you know, distributors or, or, or people that you work with, what, what data is missing? What do we need to be thinking about that would really help you? I, th I think for me, uh, because of the inconsistency of our bill of materials, uh, because of the custom status of our business, um, I would like to get a better grip on what am I buying? The most mm. often, you know, what are the things that you see? I mean, there's things that I know are um, very consistent, uh, but where do you see, um, you know, my purchasing going? A, I always like to know um, how much I've spent with my suppliers each year um, and our new system that we've put in will finally give me quick access to that, which is great. But um, where, where are my consistencies? Um, sometimes I don't have uh, the information, I mean, I have like, for example, right now I have about 15 jobs on order. And in those 15 jobs, there is no way humanly possible <laughs> to consistently stay on top of, you know, oh, you know, we buy this one all the time. There's, of course, always the things we buy all the time, but right. the specialty things, what, what special power supplies am I using? What, you know, HMIs am I using that are more consistent? You know, maybe those are the things that we should look at for modulizing. You know, maybe we should be mm. moving our systems and saying, you know, hey, this seems to be where we're leaning, you know, get with engineering. Can we, you know, talk about making a system where um, maybe we get a little bit more standard, even though we're custom, can we standardize? And yeah. the answer to that is, yes, you can, you know, but it takes time. So yeah. having that kind of information, I think, is something that is useful. That, I mean, that's, that's tons of insight right there. And I mean, to, to the point, uh, distributors, suppliers and things like that should really be looking at that as well. You know, hey, here's some patterns I'm seeing, you mm -hmm. know, or, or maybe and it could be seasonal, right? Depending on different right. types of businesses and things like that, uh, just to help anything I think that could give you a, a little bit of a, more of a clear picture into that crystal ball of what's to come. Right. Uh, I, there's probably a lot of value there. And you know, when you think about the, 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 the metrics and the KPIs, you, you mentioned earlier, I'm trying to remember what it was, you call it result areas versus, you know, that's a new metric or, or that you're looking at. Right. What are the, the numbers that really matter the most to you? Is, are you trying to, to turn like inventory turns for, for a certain amount or are there other metrics that are really yeah. important for you? I mean, we really focus on obviously our uh, returns on our projects, you know, are, are we quoting the right way? You know, for, oh, you know, yeah. for, for us, it starts at the, at the very top with all of the changes in the cost of goods right now. Um, you know, how fast are our sales teams keeping up with us? Are they keeping up with us? Um, are we giving them the information that they need so that, you know, I could say, Hey, listen, you know, you need to up your margins by this amount because, you know, these are the kind of increases we're seeing. So, um, I think, you know, um, trying to stay on track with, um, 
the cost and maintaining profits really is a focus right now. Unfortunately, yeah. it's it's um, and and availability. I mean, our lead times have expanded way beyond what we would like them to, but it's just because we have like key parts that have gone from six to eight weeks to 18 to 22 weeks. So right. we're not promising jobs in eight to 10 weeks with those kind of, you know, you yeah. know time frames. So it makes it tough. That's for sure. Yeah. So, so, so I'm curious for you, Karen, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you a magic wand Okay. And you, and you can have this magic wand and you can use it to, to, to work with your suppliers for, to help them innovate, you know, build, create something that's going to really help you, uh, in the future, you know, you wave that wand, what, what, what are, what are those suppliers doing in the future? That's going to make that big uh, impact for you. Hmm. Well, that's a good one. I think, um, I actually think it would be great to have more suppliers where our systems actually communicated with each other. Like, okay. would it not be awesome for me to like sit down during the day, cut my POs and at the night, hit a button and they automatically go over to your system, you know, probably like a little bit more on like the EDI side, um, mm -hmm. a little bit more um, interface. Um, I, I think that's probably, um, well, of course, you know, if they could, you know, fix the supply chain, that'd be great too, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. Right. <laughs> but we can't, so it's all good. But I, I just, I just really think that partnering um, is so important, and having our systems. You know, I know EECO. You know, with your new, newer online um, resources, um, all of that helps. You know, it just yeah. makes everything easier. Um, and I think just kind of working with the technology and staying up with that. I mean, here we've made the investment last year to. Um, you know, increase our technology on this side so that we can be more efficient internally, um, as well as um, process information. In a, in, we were on four separate computer systems. There's only like 20 something people here in this building. <laughs> so um, we had four different databases that we were running for information. So now we're basically all on the same. And um, we have one like sales thing that's kind of still on the outside, but we will bring that in eventually. Um, but that makes it better for all of us to have the ability to make decisions together as a team too. So, um, I think probably just staying up with the technology and, and offering, yeah. you know, when things are coming new, you know, what, uh, what, what kind of things do you have that are new? What, what do you think will help me kind of thing and get, get me thinking about changes? Absolutely. Well, I think you did a good job with that wand. So good job. There. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, this has been, a, I've learned a lot from you, Karen, you know, on this, on, with this conversation, we call it eco S why we always wrap up with the why, you know, so if you were to, to, to summarize why is understanding procurement so critical for those manufacturing and those that serve that, that industry in mm -hmm. the future? Well, I think that one of the things, um, the idea of what procurement has become in a company has changed like drastically since um, I actually had my first procurement job. I'm going to age myself here really quickly. Um, but uh, right when I got out of high school, so like 1980, I started working as a junior buyer um, at a company and it was basically just a clerical position. Right? right. So, I mean, we've gone from where procurement is become uh, a key decision-making department Um with goals for, for future improvement to help with profitability. It's no longer just somebody cutting purchase orders and sending them out. So I think it's um, understanding the processes and the negotiations and all the things that kind of bring things together is important. And I think that's where we're seeing um, procurement go probably in the last, you know, like 20 years, it's, it's changed yeah. a whole lot. It's going to be interesting to see where it goes in the future, but I tell yes, you what, it is. <laughs> Karen, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for, for sharing so much insight with us. This is, a, this is an important topics, conversations. And if you're serving industry out there, you need to understand the, your buyers as well. So many times we just think about the end user, the engineers that we're trying to you know help them with their projects. Mm -hmm. We need to also be working with, you know, people like yourself in the professional procurement world uh, to help, mm -hmm you know, serve you as well, as well. in, in those areas. So it's been, well, a, we appreciate a, a, that. 
absolute <laughs> uh, pleasure, Karen. Thank you so much for today. Thank you, Chris. Well, that was a lot of fun talking with Karen Blackburn. I'll tell you what, I learned so much from her on this idea episode. And again, the, the issues with supply chain, I mean, all that stuff's real. But, but, but Karen really focuses on the value added. And I think if you're serving procurement these days, you need to think about the value added areas. You know, where are you going to bring that extra little bit that's going to really help them get to that next, you know, goal that they're trying to achieve. So wonderful conversation right there. You know, thinking about the patterns that, that buyers have, the data as suppliers, if you're, if you're serving in industrial manufacturing, particularly helping procurement, think about the data you can provide them that's going to make their job better. That's what we need to be doing. So conversations like this, very impactful. Learned a lot. Can't thank Karen enough for sharing. And if you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, please share it with someone else. You know, send a text message, send an email. Uh, go to ecoaskwhy.com and just check us out. All of our different conversations we've had. We have a lot of information out there that really is aimed to serve you, to help give you that information you need in manufacturing to, to again, people and ideas over products to keep getting better. So uh, thank you again for, for listening, for watching, for checking us out. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on Eco Ask Why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.